Today, we've got Keith and Michelle Norris back on the show. They are the founders of Paleo Effects, one of the best and most loved health conferences out there. Um, they also are talking today about their new book, Primal Uprising. Um, we had them on the show before, but we dug deeper into the seven pillars of health. Um, they kind of they call us a guidebook, which is really, I love that. Um, I, I'm so grateful to them for everything that they put out into the health community. So if you're into health optimization, um, connecting the spiritual and the physical, you're going to love Keith and Michelle. Shell. Um, they do a lot of deep inner work and really lead by example. Um, I love them so much. And so, yeah, we get into, um, honestly, like putting health back into people's hands, you know, turning people back inside of themselves, which you guys know with inside out health, that's what I'm all about. And so I really resonate, um, with, you know, they share similar views on me and getting rid of this guru mindset that pulls people outside of themselves and really encourage people to find the answers within, um, I love Keith and Michelle. They are so passionate about freedom and for people being able to be free to forge and create the lives that they want to live in the bodies that they want to be in. And so anyway, I'm just so excited to talk about their book. Make sure you check out the link in the show notes for their book and also their um, Primal Uprising uh, Summit that they have coming up. And also they've got dates for Paleo Effects. It's going to be um, April 29th, 2022. I cannot wait to get back to Paleo Effects. Um, it's my, one of my most favorite events of the year by far. I've met many friends there. It's such an inspiring event. So if you're into this stuff and you want to find community, I cannot recommend paleo effects enough. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this interview with Keith and Michelle Norris. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system and I get a lot of questions because, um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Um, also though, 
In, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, or a ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so that's, that's how I approach things in higher. There's more, we do prizes every month, Nikes, Lulu's, um, all of my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. We do three zoom calls a week. So you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest. And it's just, yeah, it's like, I created my life and I created my life the way I like and I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives and it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So. Uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my keto in and out program, um, on my website. Site. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto. And then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. All right. Hey guys, we've got Keith and Michelle Norris back today. Thank you so much for joining us from your adventure mobile. You guys are in an RV right now. You, can you share what you're up to? Absolutely. So yeah, um, we just recently launched our book, Primal Uprising, and our, our amazing publishers sent us this really incredible thing. So this isn't like a vanity piece, although I <laughs> suppose it sort of is, but but they sent it to us, and so we thought this was like kind of the perfect place to put it. Yeah, um, because we do all of our interviews and podcasts and stuff from here, and we're in the middle of getting a summit, the Primal Uprising Summit, ready to launch, and we're going to be doing that to actually really launch the book. The bo the book was supposed to launch at Philippex, and of course, the city of Austin didn't allow us to have Philippex for 2021 or 2020. Um, so we did a kind of a soft launch. This will be the real launch. And then of course we'll relaunch again at 2022 paleo FX event in April of 2022. So we're, we're excited about that. So we yeah. have a lot of stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. So, um, guys, we'll dig into the book in a minute. It's so good. And I can't wait for you guys to hear about that, but I'm curious, um, when this primal uprising summit is going to be, do you have dates on that yet? Yes, we do. And let me look at, cause I keep saying the wrong date and I want to make sure I give you the Is this right. an online summit? It is. Mm -hmm. Nice. And it'll start September the 29th and it'll run through October the 3rd. Nice. Of, uh, of 2021. So yeah, it starts on October, I mean, September 29th through October the 3rd. So we're excited can, about that. Where Lots can people find info on it? You will be able to go to paleofx.com and find information on that probably in the next few weeks. Right. Uh, it's going to probably be a little while. And then we, we are doing this in conjunction with a company called Viral Summits. Virtual Summits. Okay, nice. whatever. <laughs> viral because they go viral anyway. yeah like they listen to me hear me right. now anyway I'm, um, I'm trying to rename his company <laughs> i don't know why but i just i delete the t and the u well i do the same thing <laughs> make it your way you make it your way it's, yes. it's cool <laughs> anyway. so here's an interesting story about creating whatever we see in our minds so when we wrote this book um which 
that's the silver lining of COVID for us was, although it throttled paleo effects, it gave us a window of opportunity to produce a book that had been in the ether for us for five plus years. And we couldn't get any bite on it. But come COVID, because of the nature of the book and what we talked about in the book, all of a sudden we had three publishers who wanted, who wanted in on it. So that was the upside of that. But a funny aside is, once we went through all the initial writing and got down to the table read, which is like the final edit, um, and we worked with a writer too. A co-writer. A she, co-writer. Who she is helped awesome. us. She was amazing because, um, you know, Keith is an incredible writer, like an amazing writer. We, we really could have written the entire book ourselves. And, um, and what was amazing was our agent was like, work with her and see how you feel about it because we think that you'll really, really enjoy it because for one thing, she has experience and thank God she, she did help us because she knew all of the things that we didn't know about the publishing thing and getting things done on time and all of that stuff. And she would tell us what was coming and what we needed to be getting done and everything, which was really nice. It was kind of like having your own Sherpa. So it was really cool. But the great thing about her was she knows that she knows our sphere so well that that she knows the book industry so well that she knows how to put your words into the book in such a way that, that, um, it really, it really comes out. A lot of people have this, this preconceived notion about what a ghostwriter or a co-writer is, and there can be ghost writers who basically have a basic gist of what what you want written and they have all the knowledge and do all the research and they write the book for you that can happen that wasn't what happened with this book this was all of our information she just married it really well with our voices because when keith was writing the when he writes stuff in the book this is how we were doing it previously um before we got her involved is he would write uh, part of a he would write a, a chapter and I would write a chapter and we would write it and then when the other one was editing we would edit it in our own voice so it was it was uh, it was never it was never cohesive and it was, it was never deep. married really well and she was able to marry our voices really well and we um we actually spoke the entire book with her and so she recorded all of that. And then what she did is went in and pulled all the pieces and parts and put them in a nice order and put them together really, really well. So that she would put, move in from one thing into the next really seamlessly. And so we would have had a really amazing book and a, most of the material that is in the book would have been in the book. Mm-hmm. It just would have been in this particular without her. And so it was a really, really incredible situation. And I'm going to let Keith go back to the table read because that was hysterical. So we come through and we we come through the editing process. Um, We were contracted for a 75,000 word book. Um, And at the end of a very, very intense working period, writing period, we had 200 and I don't know, 60,000, something like that. So we had to go from 260, 260,000 to 75,000 was the goal. We ended up about 110,000. And so now we're at the table read to try to cut that. The editor was like, or the publisher was like, we'll go 90,000. <laughs> so now we have to go through and, and whittle it down to 90,000. And so we do a table read. So everybody take, we all have a copy of the manuscript and we go through and we read aloud because there's a lot that you can pick up in audio that you can't get by reading. And we would take turns reading and make little edits. And then it'd be my turn to read. And I would take off and start reading. And they would be like, He what? would just add, <laughs> he would add shit in. I don't have that. <laughs> we'd be like, wait a minute. I don't have that on mine. And I was like, what and is, like what's what? on yours? And we're like, wait, let's see yours. And so we're looking at his and we're like, those words are not there. And he goes, well, they should be. And we're like, oh. we're adding more words. We're taking them away. So it was really a picture into how I write for one th- and how I read. So I realized that I read what I want to read, not necessarily what's on the page. And I will automatically just ad lib and edit. It. Yeah, it, it's super, super interesting in human psychology. And that was a rabbit hole we probably did not need to go down, but there it is. 
Yeah, you know, and we finally we told him after the third time of him doing this, and we're like, "That's it, you cannot read." It. <laughs> we're gonna be reading, and you're gonna have to just listen. I know, we, guys. You know, I, can say, this. I can totally relate because I just wrote a book too. It's coming out at the end of the year, and every single time I read it through, I'm like, "Oh no!" and I'm changing it. Eventually, I'm like, "I just gotta submit this, get it through the editing process, so I can completely relate." But I have to say that you guys nailed it on the voice, like you're saying, because as soon as I dropped into the book, I was like, it, it, it's an instant page turner. You read one page and you're, I, I found myself like a, you know, like I was at church. I was like, yes, amen. Yup. You know, <laughs> you call those words. so you guys really nailed it on creating and engaging. It's not like, oh, here's just a bunch of info. I know about paleo effects. I probably know. Uh, uh-uh. Like you guys really, really nailed it on bringing in the next level. And I love that you refer to it as a guidebook, right? Like that is so awesome. I was, you know, telling Keith and Michelle before we started, I so appreciate you guys because the, the voice that you've given to so many incredible people through paleo effects has impacted my life. And so many people that I know my clients lives, my colleagues lives by having that voice. And so you guys have been going down this. When, when did you start paleo effects? We started Paleo FX in 2000. Well, it launched in 2012. We started it in 2011. 11. Yeah. So for the past decade, you know, a lot of these cutting edge health, biohacking, spirituality, um, connecting to nature, like all, all of it, a lot of it is rooted from the stage that you guys have given so many people through Paleo FX. So I appreciate that. And it's like, you know, on the back end, a lot of people probably don't know how much personal work you guys put in in your own personal development and your own education. And so you're just like constantly filling that cup and finding out what's awesome and, and giving people stage a, a stage to be able to share that with the masses. So I really appreciate that. And I wanted to start, I wanted to, do you guys mind sharing a little bit of your background personally and what you're passionate about? I know you guys are NLP certified, correct? You know, like what, can you give us a little behind the scenes of Keith and Michelle and what, what you guys are passionate about in your own learning and education? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we are, um, we are NLP certified and, uh, probably by the time this, this comes out, we will be master certified, um, in in NLP. And then we, both of us intend to, um, do trainers training, which means we'll be able to train, train trainers. Nice. And so we are, um, we're, really passionate about anything that has anything to do with empowering the human. Yeah. Everything about empowering a human is what we're into. If it is disempowering, we have nothing to do with it. We will run from it. We will, Mm -hmm. we will get on rooftops and, and, you know, (laughs) stay away from it, whatever. Um, I, we are just really big on the human being empowered, which is one of the reasons why we definitely wrote the book is um, this, um, it's interesting because the original manuscript, um, the original book proposal was called escaping the human zoo. And we go immediately into that. The very first um, paragraph of the book, we talk about you are in a human zoo. It is a zoo of your own making. So you are in a prison and a cell that you have created and you have chosen for yourself. Do you want the keys to get out? Because we can show you where they are and you have them. Love it. You don't need us, but we know we can tell you how to find the empowerment where it is within you in order for you to be empowered and get out of the, get out of the cell because we have been programmed. We have been um, manipulated and we have been, had so many things, any control mechanisms that have cre- been created in order to keep us under control and to keep us from realizing our true human potential. And, you know, you'll hear from time to time that we use what I think 10 or 12% of our brain capacity as humans. And it's like, okay, wait, where is the other 80 right 88 percent of that where is that and yeah. how do we locate that and i will tell you a, a lot of that is going into a lot of the work that we do the self-development into plant teachers into the, um into the nlp mm-hmm. all of these different modalities and everything that really hone in 
on our language, on our thinking, on yeah. our, our ability to really truly manifest and create everything that we want in our lives. And the thing is, is that we all have the capacity to be able to do that once we are able to step out of these control mechanisms, see them for what they are and no longer participate in them. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, 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 I was just gonna add to that, that, um, you know, Michelle spoke of the, you know, using a small percentage of your, of your brain power. And I think another way to look at this is to look at the, the relationship between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. We operate out of the subconscious mind between 95 and 98% of every day. Although our conscious mind would say, oh, we're conscious of everything. Mm -hmm. And we are not. We are not at all. So if you understand the power of the subconscious, if you understand that we operate by stories that are on repeat, some of the stories are dropped in there unbeknownst to us. Some of them are purposely programmed in there. And the idea is cool. Okay. I understand the way the game is played. I'm going to program my own subconscious to produce results I want. Yeah. And and there is a process for that. There is, and and that's, that is 90% of the work that we do in this space with, with clients. It's all about that. And it is putting them in a position of empowerment. So we are like, we are not your guru. We are not your lifelong coach. What we are is to get you through this process, teach you the tools, and then you stand alone. 100%. We don't need to be a, tra- a train- set of training wheels for you forever. Yeah. We're not like yeah. um, Big Pharma, where we want you completely dependent, and what we're going right. to do is keep maintaining you. In yeah, that. exactly. We want you out. We, we want you to not need us. We want you to be able to go and be empowered to help somebody else get free as well, because once we are all free, once we are not just free to in mind and in body and every and in our souls, when we are completely free, I cannot wait to see what humanity is like and what what it's like to be here on Earth as humans when we have all realized our full human potential. Right, a hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. I, you know, that's it forced me into mindset coaching as a health coach because I was like, you don't need a program or a meal plan. Like, <laughs> you need subconscious mind reprogramming (laughs) when those stories get aligned everything just falls into place you know you I'm like you might not even need to lose weight how about we dig into that one you know so um I I appreciate that that so much and so I guess that leads us to these pillars that you guys give in this basically a guidebook and you know the human zoo how you guys start out I love it so much because you're talking about do you want to take the red pill or the blue pill like you want to go or not and for me the reason fitness and health is so important to me is because it led to my personal awakening. It led to completely destroying my life as I knew it, burning that shit down and walking out of the ashes and rebuilding it from my own self instead of all of the programs that I had been <laughs> built up on. I had, you know, these, these ego structures that we build in our woundedness and our programs are so interlaced, our family, our relationships, our job, you know, you're, it's just keep people so stuck. And sometimes you got to burn that shit down. And, right. and for me, getting healthy gave me the, honestly, the intelligence. Like, I felt like I woke up, my mind got healthy enough that I was like, I can do this. I got this, you know, it got me thinking about thinking for myself. And I think it was honestly the combo of like BDNF, making new neural pathways, getting stronger, just having more nutrients to my brain, you know, and then that led to plant medicines and a lot of subconscious mind work, work of Byron Katie. And so very similar things that you guys do. And so I love this guidebook that you guys have made. Thank you for making a guidebook for people to be able to get out of the freaking matrix. (laughs) So let's jump in because you guys have seven pillars. And I was wondering if you guys could tell us about those today. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we believe in order for a human to be fully optimized, you need the seven pillars. And if you see on the front of the book, um, the circle, the circle of and and each one of those is a pillar and we we set it up like that so they're actually like dominoes so this is the thing there's no i I do not believe that balance exists truthfully like in in the human life you're going to have some things that are running hot you know 100 percent. some things that are running at whatever the thing is is to have all of those plates all in the air all of those pillars moving we want all of them moving for us to be fully optimized human beings, we need physical health and mental health 
emotional health, relational health, financial health, spiritual health, and tribal health. So the seven pillars are these pillars. Now we talk about everything about these seven pillars and it includes all kinds of things across the board too that include like things like um, regenerative agriculture, yeah. decentralization of markets, decentralization of healthcare, of the education system, of the financial system, of <laughs> government, of all of those things. When we get into a decentralized situation, we're going to actually have fully optimized human beings that we have systems that are set up to fortify the human, not humans set up to fortify the system. Right now, we have systems set up where humans are fortifying that system. We're watching the dismantling of that entire system right now. And yeah. you see this play out, particularly over the last 16 months with um, the pandemic. So what, what we're seeing is the destruction of all of these these systems because you're having people wake up at an at just a like like at no other time in history we're having humans wake up to their full potential and to the idea that they have been asleep to the system that they have been um enslaved to we have been enslaved to all of these systems that don't fortify us we fortify that and so when you think about this, and this is probably one of the most enslaving systems that we have in place and probably one of the most insidious is that we perpetuate a system where we as the humans and the people in particularly this country, particularly in the United States, we are taxed. And I want everybody to really truly think about this because when you truly wake up and think about this, you will see how screwed up this is. We are taxed on our own labor. Whoever thought that was a good idea, but except me, for those who control. But let, let me ask you, what does that actually sound like? When you're taxed on your labor, on your back, it's fucking prostitution. <laughs> we are all enslaved prostitutes to a system that does not fortify us, it fortifies itself. So the thing is, is that in true reality, if a system was really here to fortify the human, we would not be taxed on our labor, we would be taxed on our consumption. But this whole system is upside down because we are programmed, we are manipulated, and we are marketed to, to create consumers for us to constantly be seeking something outside of ourselves to fill the void of us not being enough and us not being worthy. We are constantly in pursuit of that next thing that's going to, oh, this is it. If Once you have this, you're going to be fulfilled. You're going to be happy. You're going to have all of these things. Oh, and when you have this... Because, you know, your neighbors, the Joneses, have, have this brand new Tesla. So you, until you have that Tesla like them or a better one, you're less than. You yeah. are not enough. You yeah. are not fulfilled. You can't be happy. You're going to be happy when you get that. You're going to be happy when you buy the big, huge mansion. You're going to be happy when you buy the yacht, when you buy the whatever, the boat, whatever the case may be. We're constantly in pursuit of the thing that's going to fill a void that cannot be filled by anything except your own worthiness. It can only be filled by the fact that you believe that you are created in the image of God and that you are here for a purpose and a reason. And it isn't for consumerism. It isn't for the Tesla. It isn't for the thing. It is for you to learn to love yourself so that you can love others and that for you to be able to create the evolution of the human consciousness to transcend this human dimension, this third dimension, this density that's here. And so when we finally get to a point where we are no longer, we are no longer needing to buy things in order to fulfill us because they can't, they never will, but when we buy things that are in, in service 
to who we are once we know that everything that we need is already here. One thing, there's a lot of people, whether you, no matter what you believe or whatever, I am a Christ follower. Christ said repeatedly, the kingdom of God is within you. Yeah. That means you don't need to go look for anything outside of yourself because it already exists inside of you. So when you finally get to that point where you say, oh, this is everything that I've ever been looking for. It's here. It's already here. I don't need to do anything for it. I am worthy of it. And it is part of me. I, I don't have to seek anything else to fulfill me. Amen. When you love yourself, you can love others. The litmus yeah. test for just about any question you could have is, does it seek to empower me or does it seek to enslave me? It's a very, very simple litmus test question. You look at any government organization, anything like that, AA, for instance, is a perfect example of that. Once an addict, always an addict. What does that look like? Amen. I, I <laughs> thank you. I finally found somebody who agrees with me. I'm like, I know this is, but I don't like this label you're you. taking and the, oh, this does not feel right. When we, <laughs> when we work with former addicts, it is done. They come out the other side. Whatever the drug of choice was, was something I used to do, but I am not an addict right. at all. I right. mean, and that is empowerment. The other side, oh, I'm always an addict, which means right. I always have to look outside of myself for support. Exactly. For support. exactly. Yeah, and so. these labels, I, I, I bet you guys are on that same page. These labels that we give, they, they are so off kilter with truth. You know, it's like, oh, you have x thing so now that's just into the road instead of like what's going on let's talk about it you know and getting to the deeper level so i appreciate that so much and i agree with you guys 100 percent. i'm on that same mission of um helping people find the answers within like i can't you know as a coach i'm like i am just here to help ask you great questions and get you thinking but those answers are inside of you i don't know i'm like yeah. you, they ask me all the time i'm like tap in and ask <laughs> you know i even tell my constant like ask your body what it needs ask right. your body you know, your GI doctor gave you 50,000 foods that you can't eat. Okay. Well, you know, you ate it. How did you feel? I felt freaking amazing. My body's craving that. And I had no issues after. Okay. Well, I'm going to trust that versus that doctor just being real right. because your body yeah. will tell you your body, the answers are inside you, you know? <laughs> so I appreciate this message, but I'm, you know, your, I was just going to say the complex of your body and your subconscious mind knows everything. Your yeah. subconscious mind, the primary it, it, the primary reason for its being is for your betterment and your survival and your, it has a perfect blueprint to health and healing inside. When Michelle and I work with a client, we don't know any of the answers. The client knows everything. All we do is position ourselves by asking questions to be a perfect mirror for them. They will eventually answer their own question. A hundred percent. I always say, I'm like, I, sometimes I just feel like my actual job title is help you listen to your own intuition. Yes. yes. <laughs> what your intuition has been telling you all along. Yes. Do that. Yeah. And I'll give you some scientific backing if that makes you feel better about yourself, but yes, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's another thing. Like we talk about this too, in the book is, you know, we, we have a, an entire, we have an entire ecosystem, if you will, if that's the right word to call it of biohackers. Yeah. Um, of, and, and I know it's a meme and it's a joke a lot of times. And the thing is like, oh, my, my aura ring said that I got only whatever hours of, you know, deep sleep and what have you or whatever. And my, my score is this and I should feel like shit, but you know what? I feel amazing or whatever. But <laughs> you know what? I think that that, that aura ring is right. And the thing is, is these are all really incredible tools for us to start really gaining insight and really feeling into our bodies and really trusting ourselves so that we actually don't really need these anymore that yeah. we, you know, they, they have, they can be a little backup or a, or right. training wheels. If you, right. if you, if you, um, must, that's, a that might be a good <laughs> metaphor is that they're really great training wheels for training you to really tap in and really yeah. understand yeah. your body and yeah. everything. But at the end of the day, you know, what, 
doesn't matter what the numbers are on the or ring or on the blood labs or any of those things. How do you feel? What's going on within you? Do you feel happy? Do you feel satisfied with what you're doing? Do you feel fulfilled? Do you have all of those things? Do you have all those things that you need? If so, then discard the numbers as long as you are in it. Use the numbers to your benefit, not to your detriment. Yeah, absolutely. The last time that I, I mean, I wear tracking devices and stuff, but I rarely look at the data. Yeah. Uh, I, and when I was training people, I would have them wear them and it was solely, I would have them wake up in the morning and dial in. How do you feel? Dial in, ask your body, have a conversation with your body. All right. Now look at the data. And there was just this process of, and, and we use the data is feedback, feedback, feedback. Yes. Eventually yeah. they got to the point where I was, I can pretty much tell you what my HRV is in the morning. Yeah. And yeah. It's pretty dang close. And, 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 and I'm not special. Anybody can do that with yeah. enough time and, and dedication to the process. Yeah, I think, you know, I always tell my clients if we do blood labs and DNA testing and hair mineral testing, all that stuff. And I'm like, just take this as food for thought. Please don't identify with this as well. I, I mean, I've had people come to me and they're like, I have the MTHFR disease. You know, that's how I identified they have become with this extremely common genetic mutation. I'm like, no, 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 you don't have a disease. And it's, 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 and actually right. your body might even have a workaround, but let's give you some activated folate to see, you know, but don't get identified with it. Like that's the biggest thing I think is that we allow these outside things to tell us I have X mental illness. I have X, you know, I have ADHD. I have MTHFR. I have this, I have this. And it's like, Whoa, let's take it as feedback and let's see, play with it. See if you, you know, so your vitamin D comes back really low. You might want to consider that, you know, just try it out. Do you feel better? Do you get in the sun? Do you feel better? Okay, cool. Now, you know, you need, you know, you need sun. Okay, cool. You know, instead of this, like, I, I think there's a lot of, because of all the biofeedback that we can get, there's kind of this distrust of self. And I need the, I need the paper to tell me if I'm feeling better. So I appreciate your guys' message on that. And I also like, I, I, I love the book. I want to um, talk about a little bit more about the pillars because what Michelle, what you were talking about with this awakening, which I feel it too. Anybody's like, on the kind of tapped in, it's like, oh man, man, there's so, there are so many people that are hungry. They're starving. Like they've woken up. They've, they've like walked out of this invisible cage that they were living in. And they were like, what now? You know, so what do you say to those people? Oh, yeah. wow. Welcome <laughs> home. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing is we are returning to, this isn't a, so you, we're, yes, we're awakening to our sleepness. We're awakening yeah. to all of them. But we are actually returning home. We're returning back to the things that we already inherently knew and were already in innate yeah. in, in us. So it's a it's a welcome home. It is definitely a, a I, and I think too that a lot of people um, that are awakening to what's going on and they're starting to see things for for, for the matrix that it is and for what's really yeah. happening and everything. They're they're starting to remember, not just, not just know, but they're starting to remember the things that are, they're like, oh yeah, I, my body remembers this. Because yeah. when you really think about the, the, the idea around um, who we are, what our souls are, what have our souls been through, what are, what are they know, your subconscious has all of the answers within it, all yeah. of the answers you ever, ever need. So it's a remembrance yeah. of what we already knew. So in, in whenever somebody wakes up, it's like, welcome home. Yeah. Like, and welcome the, back. And the initial realization can be disconcerting. Yeah. It can be scary. It can be yeah. all of these things because it's kind of like, it's kind of like if you lived in a cave your entire life and then all of a sudden you came out to the great white expanse, it would be shocking to you. Yep. And you might, if you chose to turn and go back into the cave, because that's what you knew. Yeah. Right. Put your head back in the sand and go back there. But is that really living? Would you not want to be in an uncomfortable truth than safe imprisonment? And that's really the choice. Yeah. We, we, we talk about that a lot in the book is, um, is the secure or safe captivity versus dangerous freedom. Because, right. um, at the end of the day, um, freedom is there's there's there first of all 
There's no such thing as security and safety, period. Doesn't exist. <laughs> even, even in the bullshit theories and stories that are being told to us by, you know, the propaganda machines and the mainstream media and the, the experts, whatever, there is no such thing as safety and security. We are in human bodies, um, you know, on this planet and experiencing what we're experiencing. We have no such thing as safety and security. So that's an illusion. That's, that's a bullshit theory. And so the thing, the idea around that is, the thing is, is that, do you really want to hand over your safety and security to someone else and your freedom for the illusion of safety and security that does not exist? It does not exist. It will never exist. It cannot exist. It is a complete lie. So why am I trading my freedom for this illusion and this lie? Why, why would I trade that? So the other thing is, is that we are each sovereign. And one of the things like Keith said basically is, do you, do you, you go back into the cave? This is, so I'm going to liken this because so many, many, many people have seen this movie, The Matrix. Yeah. It is a real depiction of what we are, what we truly live in. Not to the degree, right? but we are, we are human batteries for those controllers or human batteries. We, we are here for, to, for their profits. We are here for them to siphon energy from us. That's what we're here for. And so that they, that's what they think we're here for. That's what they want for us to continue to please. So if anybody remembers the moment that Neo was in, he was in the little tube with the water and all the things and all the, the wires popped off and he came up out of the water and started like gasping for air. And he, then he looks around to this massive cavern of all of these huge big tubes of humans that are plugged in. That is what we're in. And that moment of being awakening, waking up is that moment where Neo comes out of the water and is breathing, you know, because he's choking on the water and what have you. And he's realizing, oh, this, all this shit's an illusion. We're all living in a big, huge illusion that is, you know, it's a holographic universe yep. that we we're here and we're like, but, but the whole thing is, is it would be really super easy to go, you know what, let's plug me back in and let me go back in here. Cause it's, because this is safe and this is secure. This is the devil I know versus the dangerous freedom of not knowing and being out there and being fully alive, fully aware and fully awake to everything that's going on in that I get to choose and I get to be the sovereign being that I am. And I get to choose whatever it is that I want to do in this life. And I get to, and no matter how dangerous it is, that I'm the one that gets to choose it. Not me going along for a program. So I will take the red pill every single day of the week to wake up and not be part of this system. Because I want to see what my human existence, what my human capacity is I want to see what my dangerous freedom can look like and what I can end up creating and manifesting in this world and how I can impact everyone based on the fact that I have chosen to woke up wake up I've chosen to be in dangerous freedom versus safe captivity I'll give you a quick example about the illusion of safety so I got out of the military in the early 90s and I landed a gig in of all places, Big Pharma. And Big Pharma at that time was the gravy train. I mean, it was the gravy train. Wow. So I started my employment in Big Pharma. And about two years later, all the, you remember the, the movie Wall Street, right? All the buyouts and acquisitions that then moved, merged into the pharmaceutical industry and there were buyouts and mergers and it, it was chaos in the pharmaceutical industry. Tara, I saw guys who had worked for, I won't name the company, but the company I was with 40 years, 40 years on the promise of a lifelong pension. Done. Nope. We can't afford the payout. What was their recourse? Nothing. Wow. 
thank you for your service, 40 years, sorry, we can't hold up our end of the bargain. Yeah. There were suicide, <laughs> suicides due to that. It was, oh. and I, I said at that time, I will never, ever put my trust in a system that promises security because it is an illusion that can be pulled from you at any time. The idea of security is the idea of safety in the future. Yeah. And that's not to say, you know, plan for winter and all of this stuff. Yes. And balance. You can't well, put all your eggs in the safety basket. It will never happen. Well, and I think that, you know, we think it's easier. Like, oh, I don't have to think for myself. I mean, that sounds easy. They just set up the system for me and I'll just kind of plug in and I don't have to think. And it doesn't sound as scary or hard or any of it. But it's not easier because once you get unplugged from that, you realize that you have been so disconnected from self. You don't even yes. know who you are. You have completely lost that. And I love what you guys are saying about remembering and also finding those answers inside of you. I love how you said your subconscious mind knows everything, everything. Yeah. Love that. Um, and I think, you know, as we come into this awakening for me, it's just been just freaking finally listening to myself and acting on it. And it was, it's been that simple and it's led to so much abundance and beauty and connection and limitlessness. And it's, it's just what you guys are saying. It's just, you know, that little nagging thing, like, Hey, you should probably get out of that job. Hey, you should probably stop being friends with that person. Hey, you should probably get divorced. I don't know. Hey, you should probably talk to your wife more, whatever it is. You just listen to those things and everything just goes up, 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 up spirals. And so it is that sovereignness that you're talking about, Michelle. And I, and I love, I love these messages. I'm on the same wavelength with you guys on all of this. So I, I appreciate your messages so much. Um, my last question is, you know, I, I think we talked about this last time I had you guys on the show, but I'd really, especially right now, like to highlight this after the whole COVID thing, we're still kind of trickling out of it, but I want to talk about that seventh pillar again and really highlight this tribal pillar. Can you expand on that? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that's really necessary and one, of, we talk about this a lot and, um, we have our really, really good friends, Todd and Cole Whitty, um, that discuss this. Uh, quite a bit, and I, we, I think we talk about it in the book, is, is creating a life team. It's really about creating the community, the, the, the family, even if they're not blood family, the family that's there when you need them, when, um, when kind of all the chips are down and everything, um, you need the support or you need, um, you need somebody that's there that's got your back that's going to be like, hey, you know, I'm here for you. We're going in for, you know, the long haul that we're there. So we, we talk about that quite a bit, that the, the, we are tribal beings. We yeah. are communal beings. We are, we're pack, really, truly pack mammals. We really, we yeah. run in packs and we need, we need our pack and our tribe in order for us to feel fulfilled for us to feel part of something bigger than ourselves and yep. for us to feel like we have um support and so that's a really important pillar um they're all important but this one is a really important pillar now we are seeing over the last 16 17 18 months we are watching that be dismantled and one of the reasons we're we're having this dismantled where we are being told to separate, to not um, come together, to not assemble, to not gather, to that it's for your safety. It is for, you know, it, think of your grandmother. Do all, this is all, these are all bullshit stories. The thing is, is that we are being told all of this because when you are separated from other human beings, this is the opportunity for programming to come in. This is the opportunity for control mechanisms to come in. This is when you are disconnected from your humanity. You are disconnected from others. When you are disconnected, it is really, really difficult to, it's really difficult to be in a heart space and in a place of, of connection yeah. because we don't have any kind of proximity with each other. Um, so I'm going to ask you this question to see if you, you know the answer to this. Do you know why they made the decision about us being six feet apart? Mm. 
I can't remember. Okay. I know so, I heard something about this. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so we, if we are within, within six feet of each other, we are in hard coherence. Oh, when really? We, when we step out of six feet, we can no longer feel another person's heart space. Interesting. It is measurable in science. The coherence of a heart, the energy field of your heart, um, protrudes six feet in diameter around your body. And so when you are, if you are six feet away from somebody else, you are not in heart coherence with them. Interesting. This, this, this is intentional disconnection from humanity, for humanity to intentionally be disconnected from each other and for us to not feel each other. The thing is we all, we're all energy. That's all we are. We are energy and you can feel each other's energy. So have you ever walked into a room and knew immediately there was people there at odds with each other? That sure. is the coherence of the heart. That is the, you feel that energy and you know what's happening. And so the thing is, is that with us being told to stay six feet apart, to not see each other, to wear the masks now too, because now we don't even have we don't even have the visual of a face and a connection through the face. Now that's being cut off. We yeah. are being cut off from our own breath, which Keith attempted to talk about last summer when he was canceled. And, he, and it was a very, very important piece about our breath and our ability as humans to connect with one another. And it was part, it's part of the control mechanism of us being pitted against each other and saying, you're black, I'm white, we don't like each other, we hate each other. That's a, a bullshit story. And until and unless we are ever told to hate each other because of the color of our skin, it will not happen. It does not happen in children unless and until they are told that they should hate somebody else for the color of their skin. It's, it's a con construct. It's bullshit. And the thing is, is that we've been... It, we've been programmed for this stuff, for us to oppose each other, for us to hate each other, for us to fight. Wars are all built on the bullshit propaganda around this stuff. War is a big money. It is huge money. And there's not a single war in the history of the world that was ever justified. Not a single war. Not one. None of them. There are so many false flags and so many things that have happened to create the illusion that we need to go to war. We need to defend ourselves. We need to do all of these things. It's all bullshit. It's all, it's all an illusion. It's all an illusion to perpetuate a system that does not fortify the human and continues to, we have to continue to fortify that system. So we keep bringing in soldiers. We bring in it's all of the resources that we have to go and actually attack and or defend humans against humans. So here's another way to think about this, about tribe. And as it relates to PTSD, especially in the military, and I use the military as an example because this is kind of in the public domain now. So people think of PTSD and soldiers with PTSD as having experienced wartime trauma. Or combat trauma or you know something of that nature and yes there that there is that but there is another aspect of ptsd and i know this very well because i suffered i wouldn't say suffered dealt with it myself at one time and that is being in a situation where you had to rely on your tribe to keep you alive and your tribe had to rely on you to help keep them alive there is a bond that is created in that situation that i cannot even explain it is a basic human need. And when that person is removed from that situation, they, 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 there's this longing and this missing to go back into a situation that logically they know is crazy. Why would I want to go back into that situation? I'm back home where, I mean, everything has come. And the thing is back home, nobody needs you to that extent. Nobody relies on you to that extent. It's, it's all, it's safe captivity back home. And there are certain people, I was very susceptible to that, extremely. 
the chaos on, over on the other side, that, didn't, that, that was just my internal reference. That didn't affect me. But coming back to safe security wrecked me. Wow. It absolutely wrecked me. And I would say one more thing on the breath work too. What, what is the one thing that is able to move us, every human being has access to it, to move us from parasympathetic, where, sympathetic. From, I'm sorry, from sympathetic to where we're, our prefrontal lobe is disconnected and we react instead of respond into parasympathetic where we can now rest, digest, cool, back off. I can think about this and I can respond versus react, breath work. What is yeah. the one thing the controllers want to take away? Breath, because they want to keep you in that sympathetic fear and confusion spiral. Right, which is why the masks, you, can't, you cannot fully breathe, you cannot fully oxygenate, you cannot fully give your brain and everything all the, the oxygen and things that it needs if you are, your breath is stifled in any way whatsoever. So this is not just a control device, it is a mechanism for shutting you up and it is a mechanism for stopping you from having the ability to actually get yourself back into a parasympathetic state where you can make good logical decisions because when you are cut off from your prefrontal cortex, it is a mechanism to keep you alive when you need it um, because your brain takes so much energy. It takes more energy than anything else in your body to run. And when you are running from a saber tooth tiger, which is what this was created for, you need for your, all the energy to be in your body and your limbs and everything to get away and to get yourself safe. So it can't spend time up here. So that's why this is all cut off. And it is this mechanism that we're going to cover our mouths. We're not going to be able to breathe. We're not going to be able to see each other's facial expressions, connect in that way, have that human connection and, and everything. And that is also going back to this is, I'm sorry, but I would much rather have my breath, have the ability to see other people, to be able to connect and concern myself with getting sick versus what's happening now. The mo this isn't the most sickness I've ever seen in my life is through this mechanism of this control and of people and people being incentivized to tell on their neighbors that they're you know, not masking up or they are actually communing or any of those things. And I wanna go, I wanna say this, this is a, this is one of my most favorite quotes ever from Dom Thomas Jefferson. He said, a society that will trade a little liberty for a little safety will lose both and deserve neither. <laughs> that is true. I would say he that also the said, individual too. He also said, and this is, this is one of the things that I think is, um, is really important and this is why we have all of these people believing that okay why why are these people fighting for you know the the um why are all these people fighting for for not wearing masks and not you know all of these things it's all about dangerous freedom it's all about us having our sovereignty it's about all of us being able to choose what is right for us if you want to put a mask on, I am all for that. Right. I believe you have the right to do whatever you want to do. I believe nobody has the right to tell me that I have to do it. If it doesn't feel right for me and it doesn't feel safe for me, I should not be forced to have wear a mask or get a vaccine that I don't feel safe doing either. And God knows neither one of them makes me feel safe. But I will say, and so when we go out and we exercise our right to voice our opinion, to voice our opinion, when we exercise all of our rights of freedom, this is the ultimate test of humanity, is us being able to do that and to, and to be able to allow each other our own belief systems, even when they don't match up. Because the one thing I will tell you that we have learned through, particularly through our training with NLP is we respect every person's model of the world. Right. I don't agree with you and that is okay. I love you and I am not, it doesn't matter to me that you don't agree with me. It doesn't matter to me. Right now we are seeing a full out attack on if we don't agree, we are not friends. I hate you. You're a threat. 
you could get me killed, all of these things, it's just all of such bullshit. And right. one of the things I will say is at the end of the day, the other thing that Thomas Jefferson said is the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. And I will tell you this, as far as it goes with freedom, with health freedom, with consent, with freedom of consent and, and all of those things, this is the hill that Keith and I both will choose to die on. So be it, if the, my blood needs to be shed to be able to keep freedom in this, particularly this country, because I can tell you this, we have countries all around the world watching us. And if this country goes down, they all do. And the only way for us to completely maintain this country, maintain freedom across, not just the United States, but across the world, is for us to support the fact that we may not agree, but we each have the right to the freedom that we were innately born with. Not what's not just what's put in our constitution. We were innately born with freedom, with the right to choose everything we choose. Yeah. I, you know, I think any of us who have lived in, I like, the matrix, religious paradigms, you know, uh, the school systems, the hair plug in, fill in, and you've broken free from that. It makes me never, ever, ever want to trample on anybody else's belief because I enjoy my own freedom so much. And I, you know, I'm aligned with you guys. I, it was a struggle for me with the mass thing, you know, cause I'm like, wait, but there's like, no, I like, okay, if it really was going to hurt you, I get it, but we've determined that is not. So why am I still being forced to wear it now? We're getting illogical and my freedom's being taken away. That bugs me, you know, but, um, at the same time, like, I, you know, I have friends and colleagues that they, they see it differently, you know, and it's like, at some point, you know, that you do, you feel that urge at first to be like, wait, but like, think of this. Did you consider this? And they're like, yeah, but I still feel that way. And I'm like, okay, cool. And they'll, they'll come at me too. when they're like, yeah, but you know, they, they kind of taught me, one of my friends taught me a lesson. She was like, Tara, when you're so adamant about the anti-masking thing, I don't even feel like I can talk to you about it because I actually am kind of scared and I want to wear a mask and I actually want you to wear a mask. And it makes me feel like I can't even talk about it because you're so anti-mask. And it was a cool lesson for me. You know, I was like, okay, maybe I can approach it a little bit more gently than like the yelling, you know? And so it's cool when we can, it's like, I definitely don't see it like her. I definitely don't think everyone needs to wear a mask, but I appreciated her being able to come and give me some context, you know, of where she's coming from. And I think that, you know, if I, I'd be a hypocrite if I couldn't, you know, allow her and respect her own thing. So I, I appreciate what you guys are saying there is this, you know, really what I hear from you is freedom. That's what you guys are after. And that's my number one principle. My, my number one value is freedom. You're looking for freedom of the soul, freedom of the body, freedom to choose for yourself, freedom to carve your own way, you know, and I can see how much you guys want that for others too. Okay. I'm going to, can I, let me, so this yeah. is the so if we were, if we're going to go into the whole freedom thing, if we're <laughs> going to go into, we're going to control what people do, then I want to control that people don't eat the shit that they eat, that they <laughs> don't, whatever. So do you have the right and the freedom to eat crap? Do you have that right? Do you have that freedom? Right. So it's really no different because people don't, don't uh, really understand. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. So if I have the freedom to choose not to wear a mask and I'm putting myself at risk, I'm putting myself at risk. Right. And at the end of the day, you can believe what you want. If you're wearing your mask and you believe it protects you, then it protects you period. <laughs> whether or not I wear one. Right. 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 But it doesn't matter whether I wear one. So this is the thing. If we're going to go into all of these, we're going to start controlling people. We're going to start controlling what people can do for the good of everyone. Well, for the good of everyone, it's in everyone's best interest that you stop eating crap. It's <laughs> true. In the best interest of everyone that you don't get to a place where you're obese. I mean, because we have all of these different things that happen because we have all of this, we have all of these, these things. But this is the deal. You're allowed to get obese. That's your choice. It's totally your freedom. You want to eat crap and you want to, you don't care what you're, how you feel, what you, how you look, any of those things. You, you don't care that you've got diabetes and heart disease and every, you know, ism in the book or whatever. 
if you don't, if you don't care about any of those things, that is all fine. I'm making my choices based on what I feel is right for me. And you need to make your choices on, on what's right for you. My choice and what's right for me is not wearing a mask. My choice and what's right for me is not getting a vaccine. If you feel like having a mask and getting a vaccine is what's really great for you, this is the whole thing. If they work, if the mask works, if the vaccine works, why do you need me to do it? Right. Yeah, I, I, that's what that's been my whole feeling too. And I like what you're saying about like, what's well, like, well, you guys are helping the virus spread because you're not healthy. So actually we're going to force all of you to get healthy now and you can't make your own choices. And you're actually not allowed to eat any of those things anymore. It's like, you know, I thought the same thing. I thought, what if, what if we turn the tables and people weren't allowed to wear masks? You're See, not I was just allowed to. Bring that up. <laughs> I was just going to bring that up. So this is a scenario where there was a, bug, pathogen, whatever, that masks were 100% effective for stopping. And the government said, no. masks are forbidden because, <laughs> yeah. whatever, because it covers your face and we can't, you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> masks are forbidden. What would you do then? I know what I would do. I'd be wearing a freaking mask. I don't, because I am sovereign. Uh-huh. Right? Right. It's a different, it's totally, so that is freedom, the freedom to choose what is right for you. Right. Right. Yep. And not be controlled. And that's, that's the crux of it. Yeah. Amen. Freedom fighters. <laughs> Here we are. Hey guys, thank you so much. I just want to hit before we close, what are the dates for paleo effects in 2022? Do you know? It is April 29th through May the 1st of 2022. Awesome. And, um, that because I have yeah, a we're really, we're really excited about that, that we're finally approved and we will be in we will be uh, no restrictions um, at that point and no, um, no masks. Awesome. You one, if you so choose, you can wear one, but no masks will be. Uh, I can't yeah. wait, guys. Thank you for surviving the last couple of years and still bringing us paleo effects in 2022. Because speaking of the tribe, I mean, so many of my friends I met at paleo effects. And so, so many colleagues, like if you're looking for a tribe, get your ass to paleo effects. If this is your jam, like what we're talking about and health and, you know, the cutting edge and waking up, like get to paleo effects. I tell people all the time, (laughs) really, they're like, Tara, where do you find these like-minded friends? I'm like, I just at paleo effects. (laughs) And it's, it's just how it is, you know? So thank you for surviving and helping that, um, be able to happen in 2022. I will definitely be there. And guys, the name of the book again is primal uprising. It is so good. You guys really, I'm glad you got your, your co-writer or ghostwriter because it's like, it really, it's not just like information. It's like, it's a, it's a drop in page turner. As soon as you start, you're like, Oh shit, this is good. So it's really well done. Um, we'll put links to everything in the show notes. And again, don't forget they have their primal uprising online summit coming up too. So we'll link all that in the show notes on YouTube and on all the audio platforms. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was an honor to be with you and your audience.